Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. I am so grateful to see you. I actually just got off of an interview that I did with Lori Petro for an upcoming interview series called High Performance Parenting. So I'll share more details about that very soon. But today I wanted to talk about trust issues with your teen. Here's why. I had a mom in my community the other day just say, you know, since my son was born, I feel like my heart is walking around with him. And even watching him run and jump and play as a little kid made me anxious. And I know that this is often our experience. I'll say as moms, because that's been my only experience. I'm sure that this experience happens to men as well, but I can only speak to it as a mom, is that you know our kids are walking around and they feel like they are a part of us walking around and it can be so hard to trust our teens to make decisions and be out in the world because we feel like in some ways it's us and so this mom was saying you know is this a trust issue and the short answer is not in the way that you think it is so here's a little bit more about that if I did a survey of thousands of parents of teens and said, do you trust your teen? The questions would come back, like with what? I trust my teen to use the stove and cook dinner. I guess I trust my teen to take the car now that they've done a driver's course. Um, I try to trust my teen to make wise decisions, but I don't always have evidence of that working well. And I just love the words of one psychologist who said, it's not always about that I don't trust you. It's that I'm trying to reduce the temptations for you. And that really kind of clarifies our role as parents to really set boundaries with our teens. No, you can't stay out until three o'clock in the morning because I know the kinds of activities that happen between maybe midnight and three are, you know, not the kind of things that you, I really want you to have to make a spur of the moment decision about. I don't want you to have to, you don't have a lot of willpower when you're overtired, hanging out with your friends. That's not setting you up for success to make wise decisions. So I'm going to reduce that temptation for you and ask you to come home by midnight. Now, those numbers may not be the ones that work for your family, but just to give you an example of how this works. But okay, so our, our child is 17 and they want to stay out till midnight. We still might not trust them to make wise decisions and yet we might know that you know maybe that's an age appropriate expectation that they're out until that hour with their friends at a friend's house with parents there you know we might even know okay that situation should be fine and yet still I don't really trust that situation and I want to pull them back from that and say, no, absolutely not. You have to be home at seven o'clock in your room in bed, like when you were six years old. And I know that that would ease our hearts. And those are the moments when we recognize, I have to let my teen go into the world. And that requires a level of trust. But often we feel like we're putting all of our trust in our teens and we need to help our teens recognize that we can say to them, I trust you to make a wise decision. And that doesn't mean that they're going to always make a wise decision. What it means is, I trust that you're going to do the best you can in this situation. I trust that you're going to come to me for support when you need it. I trust that you're learning at what point you need to ask for help. And so that's what we can trust in our team is those things. Trust that they are learning and growing and they're not always going to make the right decision, but that's part of what they're learning. So that's trusting your team. There's also an element of trusting ourselves to be able to handle it when our team makes mistakes. Because here's the thing, everyone makes mistakes at some point in their life. And we need to learn how to recalculate when those mistakes happen. And a lot of us live our lives very protected and we keep the parameters very safe so that we're not really making a lot of mistakes. 
but then we have this child who wants to go and explore and experience and that makes us feel shaky because we don't always trust that we'll know how to handle it when they make a mistake and so we need to learn that self-trust as well that we can handle it now i learned this at a first aid course the first aid instructor said something you can say to someone even in the most extreme situation their legs chopped off they're sitting by the roadside the ambulance is on the way you can say everything's okay right now and even though you might feel like well a leg chopped off and like on the side of the road waiting for an ambulance isn't okay but when you think they're still alive if they can hear you and register those words they still have some brain power and help is on the way and you're a first dater right there with them that can lower their stress response and gives them that hope everything's okay right now so I have used that phrase for myself so often not in extreme situations but if I start to feel like oh this isn't working out I feel like I'm failing at this I just remind myself everything's okay right now I look around here I am still breathing still in my safe warm home still with my laptop working really in the grand scheme of everything everything's okay right now and when we can lower our stress response then we have more brain capacity to work with where we can come up with creative solutions to whatever is happening so creating parameters and boundaries for our teams so that we can limit the temptations that we know will be really difficult for them to handle and keep it in a zone where yes they are exploring the world they have a little bit more freedom every year um, but also allowing ourselves to trust ourselves to be able to handle it when our team makes a mistake and that really creates a culture in our family of being resilient and here is the next level of this. We need to recognize that we are connected to something much bigger than just our team's life, than just our life, that there is a bigger network of support that may be invisible to us, that we also have access to, that we can lean into. And that makes us realize that we're not just working with our resourceful minds, but we're also working with our compassionate hearts and with the connection that we have to other people, to source, to God, to the divine, and we can trust in that. Trust that there is a network of support that we can lean into to give us peace, to give us rest, to give us that spiritual support that helps us be able to go one more time into this difficult situation to sort it out or that helps us go one more time into this difficult conversation with our teen or with our partner and that is another level of support where we can trust so on the face of it, it always seems like I don't really trust my teen and I feel like I should more. But recognizing that there is more to this issue of trust. Trusting that things can work out for you. Trusting that you can be hopeful about the future. Trusting that there are people around you who want to support you. And trusting that you'll find a role to also support other people. This is where the trust lies. So it's never just about you and your teenager or you versus the world in trying to take care of your teen. Now, there's some incredible research as well by Dr. Lisa Moore, who has studied um, the impact of teens who have an active, thriving spiritual life. And what that means is they feel connected to something bigger, even though they don't have all the details of that figured out. The more teens trust that they are one piece of a much bigger puzzle, the better their decision making is, the better the lower risks 
they take. So if there was ever a time when you recognized that you can step into trusting in something bigger than you, the time is now. Because we know, we know with our hearts, and we even know with the empirical data that our minds need, that there is something incredibly powerful at work here beyond just our relationship with our, with our child. Because here's the thing, your child was given to you as a gift. And we feel like we need to keep this gift perfect and is still in the original packaging and perfectly cared for like a museum display. And our children are not meant to be bubble wrapped and protected. Instead, we need to help them explore the world and really live. And that takes risk. But when we can trust that we will be able to handle whatever life throws at us, then we can walk through this world with open hearts, with curious minds, with strength, knowing that we are meant to explore. We are meant to experience our lives. And if we are not doing that, we're doing ourselves and our teens a disservice. Because what do teenagers want? They want to explore the world. They want to experience something new. They thrive on novelty. They want to try risky things. They also want to do things that seem easy because their brains are wiring in that way. So raising a teen is not an easy gig. It is a challenge. And it is a challenge on our hearts to let them go. But when they walk out of our door, what we need to do is really take care of our hearts so we can say to them confidently, I trust you. I've got this. I know you've got this. We're in this together and we can figure out anything together. Now, if this message is bringing up uncomfortable emotions in you, thinking about letting your child go out into the world, or you're feeling fuzzy about, like, but when do I let them go and where do I set the boundary? And if you're feeling fuzzy about, like, I don't know, I kind of know what you mean about trusting in the invisible, but I don't really know what that's about. That's exactly the work that I do with my clients. So I call it spirit meets strategy. So part of the work is really nurturing our hearts, building that connection so we recognize that we can handle anything. And we really activate our power as a parent when we can step into that position. That also allows us to confidently say to our teens, here's the boundary, this is where you can handle it, and here's the decisions I'm making for you, and this leaves all of these other decisions for you to make, so that our teens can confidently walk out the door and we are not suffering through all of that. Because raising a teenager really can be a joyful experience. It can be exciting. Of course there's turbulence along the way, but when we are supported in a community, that's when we can really care for the emotional journey of raising a teen and support each other through this. So if you're feeling like this is striking a chord with you, go ahead and post in the comments. Say, I hear you. I want to hear more about how to do this. And that will give me some direction for my next video um, that will give me some direction for how I can best support you. Okay, everyone, until next time, be well.